entral access devices. Entral access devices are hollow tubes inserted into the gastrointestinal system. They benefit patients as they provide a means to ensure sufficient calorie and nutrient intake, promote healing and improve survival. The type of enteral access device inserted and the route chosen will be influenced by the length of the therapy. For short-term therapy, nasogastric or nasoenteric devices will be used. These devices are inserted through the nose to the stomach, nasogastric tubes, or through the nose to the small intestine, nasoenteric tubes. Entral access devices may also be inserted through the mouth to the stomach. This route is typically only used for infants as it is very uncomfortable and can cause gagging. When long-term therapy is required, a percutaneous access device will be surgically inserted. Nasogastric tubes have four main purposes. They can be used to administer feedings and medications, for suctioning stomach contents to prevent gastric distension, nausea and vomiting, to remove stomach contents for laboratory analysis, or to lavage the stomach in situations of poisoning or overdose. Many advanced nursing skills pose significant risk to patients if not performed with appropriate skill, knowledge, judgment and competence. Passing an instrument beyond the larynx is a controlled act under the Regulated Health Professions Act. Although one of the controlled acts authorised to nursing, most agencies require a medical order before the procedure may be initiated. Whether the RPN may insert a nasogastric tube will vary according to the scope of practice of the agency. A nasoenteric tube can only be inserted by specially trained medical staff. A percutaneous tube will be surgically inserted by a physician. The goal of therapy influences the choice of enteral access device. Single lumen large bore nasogastric tubes, such as the Levin, may be used for feeding or intermittent gastric suction. Double lumen large bore nasogastric tubes, such as the Salem, may be used for gastric lavage, continuous gastric suction and gastric decompression. Single lumen small bore nasogastric tubes are used for feeding and medication administration. Percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy and percutaneous endoscopic jejunostomy tubes are inserted for long-term feeding and medication administration. Prior to insertion of the nasogastric tube, the patient must be assessed for contraindications to the procedure. Contraindications for nasogastric insertion include recent nasal surgery, deviated septum, severe facial trauma or reconstruction, coagulation or bleeding abnormalities, altered or absent gag reflex, or the presence of esophageal varices. If no contraindications are present, Explain the procedure and obtain the patient's consent. Prepare the tube, measure the tube, insert the tube, secure the tube, and document. To avoid tissue trauma during insertion, the tube must not be forced if resistance is felt. The tube should be withdrawn, relubricated, and reinserted through the other nostril. Once past the nasopharynx, the tube may coil up in the patient's throat or pass into the patient's trachea. In these situations, the patient will often cough and gag. The tube must be withdrawn until the tip is in the oropharynx. The tube should be reinserted while the patient flexes the neck and swallows small sips of fluid. Once reinserted, the tube should be clearly seen in the back of the oropharynx. When an enteral access device is inserted, placement must be confirmed by radiography. This is essential to ensure the tube is not misplaced. During insertion of a nasogastric or nasoenteric tube, the device may pass into the trachea or may fail to reach the stomach or duodenum. Tissue trauma and aspiration are complications associated with nasogastric tubes. Checking and verifying tube placement will occur on insertion. After insertion, placement must be checked at least once per shift, before feeding and before medication administration. There are four steps to placement verification. First, gastric secretions or intestinal fluid will be aspirated and visually examined. Next, the pH of the aspirate will be assessed. The third step requires auscultating the epigastric region while injecting 5 to 20 ml of air. Finally, the length of the tube inserted is confirmed by examining the insertion mark on the tube.
The nasal oral route is only used for short-term feeding in patients with intact gag and cough reflexes and adequate gastric emptying. When a patient requires long-term tube feeding, a percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy peg tube will be inserted. The surgical opening is tightly sutured to prevent leakage and care of this wound site requires surgical sepsis until it heals. There are a number of safety points with NG tube insertion. Prior to insertion, each tube must be measured to the patient to determine how far to insert the tube. Once inserted, the tube must be marked to indicate length and securely taped to the patient's nose. When inserting the tube, it must never be forced against resistance, otherwise tissue trauma may occur, including tissue tearing, perforation of the brain, sinuses or esophagus. Only using one method of placement verification, such as injecting air through the tube to listen for whooshing or gurgling, does not guarantee tube placement. Placement of the tube must be confirmed every time the tube is accessed and at least once per shift, using four steps. The patient must be positioned appropriately to avoid aspiration and to promote digestion for feedings.